Alright, in the previous video we uh, did a partial F test for uh, basically just adding on another X2, right? So adding in um, BMI and we wanted to know does the model with both BMI and age do better than just the model with age? Right, and that's, that's the test that we ran in the previous video. So in this video, I want to uh, do a slightly more complicated um, partial F test, where this time I'm gonna add on two additional variables at the same time. So I want to know, um, you know, maybe I could even mix it up. Maybe I'll say, let's, let's see, does age and children, should I add age and children to my model uh, to a model that only contains BMI, okay? So let me write that down. So my first model, so let me see, I used blue for my reduced model, so let me do that again, okay? So, okay, so this is a new test. So model one, so my reduced model is only BMI. Okay, so I still have that intercept term, but I have BMI, so X2I, okay, plus my model error term. Okay, then my full model has both age, right, so age is X1I, it has age, it has BMI, which is X2I, and it has the number of children. Okay, so now I'm adding in these two terms, right? So that's, this is my full model. So my hypothesis, right, I wanna know is beta one equal to beta three, is, are both of them zero, okay? Uh, and my alternative, H1 or HA, depending on how you write alternative, is that um, that these guys uh, do not equal zero, okay? Given um, that the model retains, okay, retains beta two. So beta two is gonna stay in the model. Okay, and that's important that you write that when you write your hypothesis. Okay, so, so see how this is slightly more complicated and that instead of just adding, before we just added on one additional um, parameter between reduce and full, now we are going to add in two. Okay, but the idea, the way we're gonna do this is very, very similar. So we'll start with our table, starting with the source, the sum of squares, the mean squared, the degrees of freedom, oh, sorry, degrees of freedom, then mean squared, then the F. Okay, and I like to underline these guys. So if I go home, then I underline them. Okay, and we're gonna start with regression. Okay, and so my first regression is gonna be always my full model. So my full model, I have B1, B beta one, beta two, beta three, okay? And given I do have the intercept beta naught in the model, okay? So my full model, then my reduced model, my reduced model is um, just beta two, okay? But I do have that intercept term. So I'll include that, okay? And then my extra sum of squares. So my extra sum of squares are gonna be basically the benefit of adding B1 and B3. B1 and B3, given that B2 is gonna be retained and beta naught is also retained, okay? All right, so, oops, that's B3. Right, so on the left-hand side of your extra sum of squares is the parameters that you're adding, right? So I'm trying to see is B1 and B3, was it worth it to add them? Okay, then we have our residual, which is always gonna be the full model's residual, so let me do that here. 
okay? And then our total, okay? So this is the full model, this is the reduced model, and this is the extra, right? The extra sum of squares, okay? Okay, so I since I did this uh, in the previous video, I already have some spreadsheets, so let me go ahead and just delete my old spreadsheets. Delete, okay, okay. I have new models now, so. Um, so starting with my full model, which is gonna have B1, B2, and B3. Okay, I'm gonna go up here to data analysis. So uh, go up data, data analysis, regression. If you have anything in here already, delete it. Okay, and this is gonna be my full model. Okay, so that, that's good. Um, for Y, I'm gonna have charges, highlight all your charges. Insurance cost charges. For X, I'm gonna have all three of these. Okay, so if you start to highlight it, then press Shift, Control, Down, it'll highlight everything for you. Everything else looks good, press OK. Okay, so there it is. This is my sum of squares regression. This is the guy I want, right? This is the sum of squares regression for the full model. You see sum of squares regression. So let me right click on that and press Copy. Let me go back up to my table up here. Okay, and press paste. Okay. Now my reduced model, so my reduced model only has beta two in it. Okay, so let's go data, regression. Okay, and Y is fine. Delete what's X, only has BMI. Shift, Control, Down. I'll highlight all my data there. And I'm gonna call this Reduced. Okay, press OK. Okay. So this sum of squares right here, regression, sum of squares, copy it, and paste it. Let me go back up. I'm gonna paste it here for Reduced sum of squares. All right, then for extra sum of squares. Remember, extra sum of squares is basically how much did you gain in your sum of squares when you added in these B1 or beta one and beta three? How much did you gain? So that's gonna be the difference between the full sum of squares minus the reduced sum of squares. All right, so you see I, let me re re do that. So you type in equals and you click on the full, then you type in minus sign and you click in the uh, reduced, press enter, okay? All right, sum of squares residual. That's gonna be for the full model, always for the full model. Okay, go to your residual. Here it is, right click, press copy, go back to data, right click, press paste. It's a huge number, okay? Sum of squares total. Now, it doesn't matter if you get this from the full, so see it's 1.96, blah, blah, blah. For reduce, it's also 1.96, blah, blah, blah. Right, they should be the same. Sum of squares total, doesn't matter which one you get it from. So press Control C, press Control V. All right, degrees of freedom, right? For the regression degrees of freedom, the trick is, if you use this notation, it's the number of um, parameters on the left side of this bar. So this is one, two, three. Okay, this is the full model for sum of squares regression. If I go here, you see it, it's also there. Okay. Here it's gonna be just one. That's the reduced model. You can also see it just there. Okay, for the extra sum of squares, you actually do need to use that trick because you know since there's n it's just the difference between it's how much you gained, right? So we went from a model with three, or sorry, we went from a model with only one to a model with three. So we gained two parameters, right? So you see the two parameters on the left side of that bar. So degrees of freedom is two. All right, regression uh, or the residual uh, degrees of freedom, right? So you go to your full model. 
right? It's this number right here. It's going to be the number of observations that you have minus however many model parameters you have. So we have one, two, three, four model parameters, including the intercept. So 1338 minus 4 is 1334. So you can press Control C, Control V. And just for completeness, you can go ahead and fill this in. It's going to be your sample size minus 1. It's 1338 observations, so that's 1337. All right, mean squared error, that's going to always equal the sum of squares divided by the degrees of freedom. Okay, so mean, uh, mean squared, sums of squared divided by the degrees of freedom. Sums of squared divided by the degrees of freedom, that's what mean squared is. Okay, all right, so what is your F statistic? Well, for this test, right for this test what you will need is your mean squared regression your extra mean squared regression okay given beta 2 and beta naught your extra mean squared regression let me write that a little better okay divided by your mean squared error always divided by your mean squared error all right and this is going to have an F distribution, assuming that your model is, uh, is norm your model error terms are normally distributed, okay, and have a homogeneous variance um, and mean zero. Um, you know, assuming your model assumptions are, are correct, then this will have an F distribution uh, where its degrees of freedom are going to be in the numerator, we'll have two degrees of freedom, and the denominator will have. 1334. Okay. All right. So let's calculate it equals this guy divided by this guy. Press enter. Okay. So how do I calculate my p value? Okay. My p value. It's going to equal f dot dist dot right tail. Always right tail. This F value and its numerator degrees of freedom is two, and its denominator degrees of freedom are 1334. Close parenthesis and press enter. And it is so tiny that Excel gave up on trying to tell you how tiny it was and it just said zero, okay? So it's highly, highly significant. So what that means is that uh, this full model does a lot better than this reduced model. Okay, so we would reject this null hypothesis and say, yeah, so this, this, mo this full model is significantly better than this reduced model.